Hello, my name is Ninja Peak, and I'm going to show you my Arch Fiend deck because it's raining. It's raining, and I've got nothing better to do. So I'm going to show you my Arch Fiend deck, which I made today. Either way, what Arch Fiend deck is complete without three versions of Pandemonium? Pandemonium is vital because it it gets rid of that standby cost for most Arch Fiend monsters. And it also lets you draw arch fiends of lower stars when they're destroyed by card effects. I've got a lot of six star monsters in this arch fiend deck, so it is important for me to have three versions of cost down. Cost down lets you discard one, and then you reduce all monsters in your hand by two stars. So really important for not tributing something. Summoning. Uh, and just having monsters with stronger attack than everyone else. Um, for the same reasons, I've got three versions of um, Falling Down. And Falling Down lets you take one of your opponent's monsters, if you have an Archfiend on your side of the field, which you should, uh, and then lets you do what you like with it. So you can tribute it straight away, or you can keep it on the field if it's a good monster. It costs 800 to keep it alive on the standby phase. And that card will probably not be an Archfiend monster unless you make it an Archfiend monster. Still quite unlikely. Either way, very handy. Uh, I've got three versions of Archfiend's Roar. And what Archfiend's Roar does is it lets you pay 500 life points and then special summon any Archfiend in your graveyard. And it is destroyed during the end phase. Being destroyed is incredibly important because it lets you draw more Archfiend cards because of Pandemonium. And, you know, however else you want to see it. Um, there's also loads of uh, effects Archfiends use that let you special summon them anyway when they're destroyed. Special summon more Archfiends, draw more Archfiends, Archfiends all day, every day. Um, free hate buff bursts. Um, this lets this is the main combat trap I have, and it lets you destroy a monster if a, if a mon if a engagement is happening. Uh, the monster attacked is destroyed, and the monster um, that is designated for attack is also destroyed. So you use this when you are being attacked, and you destroy your Archfiend monster, and you destroy their monster attacking. And then you get to draw more Archfiend cards, or special summon more Archfiend cards. It depends on what, what happens. But this is, this is half counter, and half counter lets you, well, when one of your monsters is attacked you can increase your attack by half the attacking monster's attack. So using this using using this uh, when you when your monster is attacked, bish bash bosh, you get a monster that has half the amount of attack. So if your attack is double their attack, then you'll likely win and take some life point damage. Well they will take some point life point damage. Either way, half counter is very effective. So if you have a monster with 1,200 attack and, it's, uh, and a monster with 1,800 attack is attacking, then you will gain 900 of their attack, and they will take 300 damage, and you win. They're destroyed. Anyway, Infected Mail, pretty amazing. This is a continuous spell card, and Infected Mail lets all your four star monsters or lower attack directly. Uh, but they are destroyed during the battle phase. So this is important with a lot of Archfiend cards because you get a special summon on them when they're destroyed by effects anyway. or And you definitely get to draw more. So very important there. Two Axe of Falls. What Axe of Falls does is it increases the uh, an equipped monster's attack by 1,000 points. And then when it's destroyed... Uh, and it also takes 500 on the standby phase, but its effect is negated, and so this, be, this can be quite effective against the specific monsters. Foolish Barrel, pretty helpful to have some of my monsters in the graveyard. Um, Solomon Wishes, lets you uh, every time you draw you gain 500 life points. This is incredibly important for a lot of Archfiends, because you're drawing more Archfiends, so you're always getting some life points. Fiend Sanctuary. Fiend Sanctuary is, um, it costs a thousand points. Well, you play it and then um, you summon a Fiend token with zero attack and zero defense when it's destroyed. I mean, um, when an opponent attacks it, they take damage instead. But on the standby phase, you take damage for having Fiend's token on the field. So you get a free play and then you have to pay 1,000 you know, for each turn if you're in a, like, a tight situation. Uh, Torrental Tribute, uh, when a monster is summoned, you destroy all monsters on the field, so this is incredibly important, so if your opponent goes all out, 
you can you can pretty much wipe the board of all their monsters and then draw more Archfiend cards because they're destroyed by card effects. Um, compulsory activation device. This is important because it lets you target one monster on the field and put it into hands. Pretty useful. Sometimes you can use it for your own monsters if they're becoming a problem. Um, monster gate. This lets you tribute one monster and so you, you get the effects for tributing and drawing more Archfiend cards. But this lets you um, draw cards from your deck until you reach a monster that can be normal summoned. So you, well, there's, there's quite a lot of eight stars I have that can be normal summoned, but it's only because of their effects. So six star monsters particularly, this is great because you'll put a lot of them in the graveyard using this potentially, um, and you'll probably get a stronger monster than the one you tributed. Uh, an Axe of Despair, this increases the monster attack by thousands, and you can tribute a monster to put this at the top of your deck. It also should say that you get an Archfiend, uh, it is called Archfiend, um, but I believe I don't have that written on the actual card. Anyway, monsters. Three Valpor and Archfiends. These are important because they're the lowest star Archfiends, so you'll be able to draw um, them if you if a free or a free star Archfiends is destroyed. Uh, but either way, it's got 1,200 attack, and when it is destroyed by effects, you can draw. I mean, when it is attacked, um, you can only opponents can only attack that Archfiend card if it is on the field, uh, and it's got the effect. If it is targeted by an opponent's spell or trap, then it is negated and destroyed on a 3+. plus. I have two Desperate Archfiends. These are incredibly important for special summoning Terror King Archfiends when it is destroyed by effect or by battle, if you have it in your hands. Uh, but it's most effective if you don't have it in your hands, if Terror King Archfiends is destroyed by a card effect, because then you get to draw it and then special summoning it, because you basically castle with Terror King Archfiends, um, and it's got 1,800 attack, so pretty nice uh, Archfiend. Also, if this is destroyed by a card effect, your opponent controls, it is negated and destroyed on a 3+. Their opponent, um, their cards are destroyed on a 3+, of a dice roll. Uh, two Archfiend Heiresses. These are incredibly, these are important for searching, but when they are destroyed by a card effects or by battle, you get to draw any Archfiend from your deck. So if they're destroyed by a card effects, then you can always use Pandemonium and draw a Valporn Archfiend. Either way, in pretty, uh, pretty impressive searcher. Three Terror King Archfiends. One, two, three. These are an absolute monster. You can only summon them if uh, you have an Archfiend on the field. Uh, but you don't need a tribute. They have 2,000 attack. They destroy spells and traps on a dice roll of 2 or 5. And it pays five It pays 800 life points if you don't have Pan Moaning on the field. So it's incredibly important that you do have Pan Moaning on the field. Either way, uh, 2 Archfiend Cavalry. So these are the Knights of Chess. Um, they have 1,900 attack. And when they are destroyed by card effects, yours or your opponent's, they don't roll, roll a dice, uh, but they can special summon any Archfiend in your graveyard if you have one. So yeah, hopefully you should have them when you're bringing them out. Uh, Infernal Queen Archfiend. This is mostly support card, but it increases any Archfiend's attack by 1,000 during the standby phase until the end phase. Uh, it negates effects on a 2 and a 5, and it has a standby cost without pandemonium of 500. So... You can use that effect to bring that to 1900. Lots of players you can use with that. Trance Archfiends. You can get rid of a, a fiend monster in your hand. If you discard that, you'll gain 500 attack. Also, it's a four-star Archfiend. When it's destroyed, you can target a banished Archfiend from your graveyard and then put that in your hand. Pretty useful there. Um, two Archfiend Generals. This lets you search for Pandemonium. It's got 2100 attack. If, pan if this is on the field and Pandemonium is destroyed, then this is uh, then this is destroyed as well. So mostly used for searching for pandemonium. Either way, 2,100 attack for a four-star monster is pretty good. Evil Hero Infernal Gainer. This is a 1,600 attack monster. It's not an Archfiend, but it can you can remove it from play, and it comes back on the second standby 
standby phase to target one monster and that monster can attack twice during the battle phase so I'll get more on that later but that's very helpful later on in the game. Mist Arch Fiends, it lets you you can uh, tribute you can uh, summon this normally without tribute but it costs 2,000 well, I mean it costs 1,000 attack when it um, and then it is destroyed during the end phase so that's, this lets you search for a four lower star Arch Fiends uh, and it's pretty useful for uh, well Mostly it's just 5 star arch fiends, so you've got in between there. I do have another one of them, but I'll rather just have two. Arch fiend giant, this is the specific card you want to use arch fiends of raw for, but it has 2400 attack, and when it is destroyed by a card effect, you can instead pay 500 to keep it on the field. And it also says, um, you can summon, let's see, if this card is destroyed by a card's effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon the one Archfiend monster from your hand. So, plenty of effects there. So, if you'd like, you, you don't have to pay the 500 yet. You can wait. Um, or you can just special summon any Archfiend from your hand when that's destroyed by a card effect. So, really helpful. You get a special summon one and you get to draw a 6-star Archfiend if you have Pandemonium on the field. For my next card, I've got Skull Archfiend of Lightning, Skull Archfiend of Lightning, another Skull Archfiend of Lightning. 2,500 attack. This is an absolute boss. It uh, is a 6-star monster, so this is what I want to use cost down for every time. It negates spell uh, trap cards, designating it on a 1, 3, or a 6. So it's an absolute monster for taking down enemies. Imprisoned, two Imprisoned Queen Archfiends. These are 8-star monsters, and they have 2,600 attack. They have a standby cost of 1,000 if you don't have Pandemonium. If these are destroyed, which you aim to do using Foolish Barrier and card and uh, using Cost Down and other cards that discard cards, then they, well, if they are in the graveyard and Pandemonium is in the field, you can target one Archfiend card or one Fiend card, and that gains 1,000 attack. Uh, it has to be a level 4 lower Fiend monster, but it gains 1,000 attack until the end phase. So if you have two of them and you're using, I don't know, um, Infects of Mail, you can just do that all day. Just increase the monster attack by 2000, start attacking, or use Infernal um, Gainer. What card was it? I keep forgetting this card. Yeah, if you use Evil Hero Infernal Gainer, and you have two of these in your graveyard, and you have a Terror King Archfiend and in, um, Infects of Mail, you can just one hit someone with 4000 attack and then 4000 attack again. Either way, um, I have two Archfiend Emperor, the first Lord of Horror. These are an amazing card. You can normal summon them with uh, 1,500 attack and 1,000 defense, so they get halved. Um, but I prefer to keep them in the graveyard and then special summon them at a later date. They've got eight stars, so it takes two tributes, but 3,000 attack and 2,000 defense, really nice. You, um, If you do tribute it without summoning, it's destroyed during the end phase and... Then you get to get a six, uh, seven or lower star Archfiend card to your hand. Uh, once per turn, you can move from play one Archfiend card from your graveyard to destroy one card in the field. Really nice there. I've got one Archfiend Empress, 2,900 attack, 2,100 defense. If exactly one Dark Fiend monster would be destroyed, you can remove from play one Dark monster from the graveyard. So pretty handy there. Almost the same effect. Um... When you get to save them, um, you when this is destroyed, you get to special summon a level six or higher Archfiend monster, except Archfiend Empress. So this is why I only have one of these and loads of six star monsters because that effect is going to win games, really effective, especially because if they are if she is destroyed by effect as well, which you aim to do, then so much stuff happens. As for Tuna. As tuners, we've got Dark Resonator. The ones that return this card cannot be destroyed by battle. It's a free star tuner. Dark Fiends. It's not an Arch Fiend, so you don't get to draw more Arch Fiends for sacrificing using effects. But it does gain a lot of bonuses for being a Dark Fiend, such as you know, her ability, keeping it alive, uh, gaining more attack if Pandemonium is on the field, uh, and everything else. And you can turn it into a Fiend with Axe of Despair. Either way, and Fable Raven, which lets you discard one uh, or more to gain 400 attack and one level until the end phase. So really effective about getting some of these Archfiends 
like Red Dragon Archfiend, which is an 8 star tuner or synchro, uh, 3000 attack. It can destroy all monsters uh, with, in defense position if it destroys an opponent's defense position monster. Um, the drawback is that it destroys all monsters you uh, you do not have. It destroys all monsters you're, um, you don't have an attack, I mean, which did not declare an attack. Um, so that can work to your advantage. For example, if our, our, um, Archfiend Cavalry decided not to attack, you can special summon any Archfiend at this point. Um, lots of plays there. This is a 7-star Synchro Monster, Chaos King Archfiend, 2,600 attack, 2,600 defense. Uh, one thing. This is a uh, well. This one was one tuner, one or more non-tuner monsters. But this is one fiends monster, which both of them are. Um, this lets you swap the attack and defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end phase, and so that's that destroys defenses because that's two thousand six hundred attack and defense. You you unlikely be able to stop Chaos King Archfiends um, and. Scrap Archfiend, which has 2,700 attack, 1,800 defense, just gives me options, but, you know, this only requires a tuner and a synchro, same as this, so I'd probably put this out first. Um, well, I think that's the bulk of it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, this is Ninja Peak, signing off.